Hi everyone, welcome back to the breadboard. Today is the four year anniversary of the Raspberry Pi being released and to celebrate the RaspberryPi.org group has released the Raspberry Pi version 3 model B and I'm giving a quick look at it right now. I have one on order, it hasn't arrived yet. Um, I've had to order it from the UK because nowhere in North America seems to have it in stock uh, for immediate delivery so the Pi Hut in the UK has accepted my order and hopefully it'll be winging its way to me and I'll be able to give you some practical examples of you using a lot of the uh, Raspberry Pi 2 and 1 accessories just to verify they're all going to work properly. Um, but what is the Raspberry Pi 3? Well we're looking at it right now and there's a few differences. I'm just going to walk quickly through the board and highlight some of the things that have changed. So if you start off on the top left hand corner here is where the indicator LEDs used to be. So now this has been replaced with a um, antenna for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and the indicator LEDs have been moved down to this bottom area here. So if you've got a case that is opaque and has holes for the indicators uh, you may not be seeing them anymore. That's the only significant change I think in the basic uh, layout of the board that would affect things like cases and connectors and stuff like that. Everything else is pretty much in exactly the same place as it was including all of the mounting holes. Now what has been upgraded for the Raspberry Pi for the version 3? To start off right away we are using the Broadcom VCM2837 um, processor which brings us an A53 ARM core which is 64 bit it's using the V8 core and it is now running at 1.2 gigahertz instead of 900 megahertz which is giving us roughly a 50 percent increase in performance over the earlier Raspberry Pi 2 um, for the 32 bit applications and it may be a little more than that um, when you start getting 64 bit applications coming into play as well um, it's supposed to be fully compatible with the Raspberry Pi Model 1 and Model 2 for the uh, Raspbian and things like that. Although I'm not 100% sure yet that the Raspbian that you can download from the RaspberryPi.org website is a full 64-bit version at this point. It may have both um, included in the image and it's adjusting itself on boot up to select the right libraries. I know that RaspberryPi.org did release a Raspbian in um, February this year so it could easily be accounting for um, the extra and changes in hardware that's in this Raspberry Pi version 3. Um, what else is on here? So we've already mentioned the fact that the CPU is increased in performance from 900 to 1.2 gigahertz uh, and the fact that it's a 64-bit versus a 32-bit operating system. It has Wi-Fi 802.11n and also Bluetooth Low Energy 4.1 capabilities built right onto the board. So you no longer have to go out and buy those extra dongles and your four USB ports are now free for uh, keyboards and anything else you may want. In fact, for a lot of applications you won't even need to use them. Um, the other, one of the other significant things that's happened here is the power supply has been beefed up. The old power supply circuitry, which is down on the left hand side here, fed from a micro USB adapter, um, used to be able to supply about 1.8 amps in total. That's now been increased to 2.5 amps. So if you're going to connect a uh, small USB hard drive or some extra devices on the uh, USB ports, you should be able to do that. But it does bring to mind that you better be careful that you have a decent power brick plugged in with a good quality USB cable going to the Pi 3 because your voltage drops are going to increase and therefore you could suffer from your little rainbow up in the top right hand corner and system instability if you're not using a suitable adapter. Um, yeah, so it's fully compatible. Uh, it's a reported to be uh, so compared to a Raspberry Pi one or a you know, B plus, it should now be about nine or ten times faster than those old um, boards, which is really really nice to know. Um, still got four USB two ports. There was no upgrade to USB three or anything, and it's still a ten one hundred uh, Ethernet port with HDMI one point four. 
Uh, the camera port is the same. The DSi display port is the same. So theoretically, if you have a 7-inch LCD display and camera, then they should still work just fine when you plug it into the new one. The 40-pin I.O. connector is supposed to be exactly the same. So any accessories, Pi-Face Digital, uh, LCD displays, um, and anything else, GPS, real-time clock modules, etc., should all uh, continue to work just fine. Um, due to the speed improvement of the processor, I would expect that um, the boot up time is going to be much better as well. I know that from tests that I did with my Raspberry Pi 2 in previous videos, it would boot from cold in around about 30 seconds. So I would expect now, with it being about 50% faster than the Pi 2, or you know somewhere like that, I would expect maybe about a 20-ish second boot time, which would be nice to see. Um, still only comes with one gig of RAM. They didn't increase the RAM capacity. Maybe they'll uh, increase that in a later version um, after the Raspberry Pi 3 has been out for a while, but so far they have not increased that. The audio out jack is still the 4-pin jack, which includes the composite video as well as audio in and out. Um, so that hasn't changed. I think that's pretty much the, the key changes that we've seen here. I was just looking on the um, Pi site and uh, let me just go to that right now. And what it's saying here, this is the uh, official RaspberryPi.org website about the Raspberry Pi 3. So I'm just going to scroll down here, look if there's anything that I've missed out. Um, 1.2 gig processor, ARM A8 versus the A7 in the Pi 2, Bluetooth 4, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, covered that, uh, Ethernet, combined 3.5, composite video, camera DSi, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else in here. Um, so where can you buy one of these from? There's a number of places you can get them from. Some of them are already out of stock and some seem to not have their stock in yet. I ordered one uh, the minute it was released from the Pi Hut um, over in the UK. That seemed to be the only place I could get one immediately. So I do have one on its way to me. And the minute it arrives, I'll be digging out all of my accessories and showing you if they work or not and I'll be looking for um, trying Windows 10 IoT out on it. Um, because of the change in the processor it may not work but I suspect it might still work so we'll give that a go the minute it arrives. Um, the price for this is still £30. Uh, if you're in North America or Canada it's going to be near uh, $50-ish and in the US it's around about $35. So here it is on the Pi Hut. It's uh, 30 pounds here. So um, from Canada, it gets nearer to um, 50 odd dollars once you've done the conversion on the exchange rate and added postage in, which is quite reasonable at just over three pounds. Um, they have got it in stock, or at least they did first thing this morning when I ordered it. Um, Element 14 also has the uh, Pi 3. They have a lot of information already on their website. Um, people are already providing comparisons between the Raspberry 2 and the Raspberry 3 and there's already some blog posts starting to go up on it. I guess um, some of the people at Element 14 are already on the ball to get the uh, articles up there and a lot of people of course in the UK are able to get them almost next day delivery or even same day if they're able to go to the uh, walk-in showrooms. RS Components also have the Raspberry Pi available and have started, um, as, you know, it's all over their website, right in the homepage and everything else. So there are plenty of places where you can go to get information. Now going back to the RaspberryPi.org website, if we go to the downloads um, and have a look at that, you can see that here that there is no specific mention of um, Raspberry Pi 3, even if I go into Windows 10 IoT, uh, it doesn't look like it's been updated to reflect anything for the Raspberry Pi 3, but it's first day, so uh, it may come out really, really quickly. Uh, I am looking on the right-hand side here. Windows 10 IoT Core uh, Insider Preview, is, um, which I'm a member of. Looks like there is a Raspberry Pi 3 mention here now already. So the minute mine arrives, I will be pulling down that later version. There's a lot of improvements I'm hoping that are going to be coming in Windows 10 IoT. So that'll be nice to play with, and it's just going to be hopefully a few days before I get my product to do that. Um, but the Raspbian, if I go in here, there was no mention yet about Raspberry Pi 3 or distinguishing the download between um, Jesse for the Pi 2 and the Pi 3. So I don't know whether it's a combo version of um, 
the Raspbian, it most likely will. And if you look at the release date, it was literally uh, today. It's been released and upgraded. So I would imagine that this is probably a combined image. Um, I'm going to start this download right now just so I can see how big it is, if it tells me. Uh, yeah, it's 1.3 gigabytes in size, uh, compressed. So it's quite possibly a um, complete combo 64-bit and 32-bit image. So um, I'm going to give that a try on Raspberry Pi 2 as soon as it comes down. And I will try it on the Raspberry Pi 3 the minute mine arrives in the uh, post box. So that's pretty much it for this intro. I just wanted to make everybody aware that might not be. Hopefully if you're really into this you already know. Um, what there is for the Raspberry Pi 3, what the differences are, uh, what the upgrades are from the Raspberry Pi 2 to the Raspberry Pi 3, and where you could potentially go get it, and what I plan on doing. So uh, I've got a whole bunch of devices already set out, ready to test with this, and the videos will be appearing the minute mine arrives at, at the house, so that I can get going. But the one thing, that reading all the different places that have already been um, posting information, and that includes RS, Element 14, the Raspberry Pi.org, it is fully compatible with the Raspberry Pi 1 and Raspberry Pi 2. So you still should be able to use all of your accessories and software that you're using before. Of course, you know we all know that there are some issues for some software between the Raspberry Pi 1 and 2, but between the 2 and 3, uh, there should be no issues. And you know once people start releasing 64-bit specific software, then they may not be backward compatible. But certainly everything that was released that was 32-bit from the Raspberry Pi 2 should be working quite happily on the Raspberry Pi 3. So don't be afraid to uh, jump in there and get a hold of it. And um, as I say, once I get mine, I'll be looking at testing all the accessories and also seeing if it can be used to upgrade some of my industrial I.O. devices because it should be just plug and play on things like my um, Industrial Shields 10-inch uh, HMI display which uses a Raspberry Pi 2 in it right now. Um, adding the Raspberry Pi 3 in there means that I can free up the USB ports because things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are included and I can then have uh, Bluetooth keyboard and mouse easily accessible without having to have a bunch of wires coming out of the uh, unit so that would be excellent anyway I uh, just wanted to give you a quick update and I will get this posted right away and look forward to getting my Pi 3 so that I can start sharing with you uh, what does and doesn't work and any quirks about installation so I'll do the usual thing create videos on installing the Raspbian try to find out what differences there may be for the uh, Pi 3 Check out things like Node Red, Pi uh, the Pi Camera, the Pi 7-inch LCD display, etc., etc. So um, I will see you then uh, as far as more information on the Pi 3.